Hi everyone, and welcome to Mornings with Arbren. Today is Monday, March 23rd, and I have my tea, which is one of my favorite animals on the planet. It's a puffin. I love puffins. Um, it is very cold, very cold on my porch this morning, so that's why I have my winter jacket still on. For today's show, we're going to do two things. We're going to take a look at the plants, which I have behind me. We're going to make sure they're doing okay. Um, and then we're going to take our drawing from last episode of Penelope Rex. We're going to turn it into a watercolor. And we're not just going to use this paper. I'm going to show you a really cool way to transfer one picture, the same thing, onto another page. Okay? Um, but first, let's check in on our plants. Even just from over the weekend, they have already gotten so much bigger. Today I want to spend a little extra time looking at one person's in particular. I want to look at Towhees today. So the reason I wanted to pick Towhees plant to look at today is because Towhees plant, you can see the roots if you look really closely. Do you see these white lines? At first I thought maybe they were a crack in the plastic, but they're not, they're the roots. You can see the roots of this plant, so that's really cool. So we're going to do um, a drawing in our science journal, including the roots so we can see. All right, I have to go back into my folder, and I'm going to get the plant journal out. I'm going to turn to a new page. I'm going to write today's date, Monday, March 23rd. And I'm going to start my observational drawing. Now, when we're at school, we always use pencils, but since I'm at home, I'm going to use these really cool markers that I like to use, just because they're fun, for no other reason than that they're fun. When you're doing your drawings, you can definitely use pencil, but if you want to use markers or crayons or paint, you can go ahead and do that, just because it's fun sometimes. And let's see, I said today's day, oops. Today's date is Monday, March 23rd, 2020. So here I have my plant. Oh, you know what, I'm gonna switch colors actually. to like about these pens is they have this really cool brush on one side and I can go and make really thin lines or I can make really thick lines with the same brush so that's cool I can kind of color it in like markers And in my drawing, when I'm looking at Tauhees plant, I can't see the roots from this angle, so I'm going to turn it around. And even though I drew the plant going this way, I'm going to turn it around so I can see the roots. I'm going to switch my marker again for one that kind of makes a little more sense. And I'm going to draw these roots. my dirt and I don't want to forget whose I picked to draw today so I'm gonna to write Tauhi. Tauhi, I hope it's okay I'm using yours I'm gonna try and get to everybody's that I can um, and then the last thing we're gonna do is we're gonna write a sentence about it so my sentence today is gonna to be I can 
see roots. Ooh, roots. Oh, oh, that makes that ooh sound. R roots. Roots, that's that, that sound we've been studying. All right, I'm going to reread what I wrote to make sure I'm not missing anything because I always want to read what I wrote. I can see roots. Oh, I know what I'm missing. Period. Thank you if you saw that at home. All right, the next thing we're going to do is we're going to check in on the rest of our plants. All right. All right, so when I'm looking at my plants, I want to see if they need water. So I'm going to zoom in on Aubrey Roses real quick. If I look at this dirt compared to Jerry L's dirt right next to her, this is much drier. And then if I think it looks dry, I'm going to put my finger in there just to double check. Oh, that is definitely dry. So I want to water it enough so that the water hits the roots down below because that's what matters is the water going to the roots we don't need to water leaves we want to water roots so i'm going to watch this water if you can see it in the lighting that's tricky see how this is dark that's the water that's gone down i can see aubrey rose's roots down here so this is all dry and that looks wet and that looks wet because it's darker. So I need to add more water So because I want this to be wet as well. If you're wondering what I'm using for a watering can, it is a tea kettle, but it doubles as a watering can. Do you see, I can see it now, it's getting darker. The water is going down, it's meeting the middle. I can see the water sink in, so that's good. I'm gonna only water the dry ones and I'm probably gonna give it more water than you think, depending on how dry or wet your plant is. I might just give it a little water because it looks pretty wet. Like, so right here, Elijah's it looks pretty dark. It looks pretty wet. Let me check it out in some different light. Aha. It looked wet on top, but it does not look wet going down. So I'm going to water it. All right, I, I watered all your beautiful plants. I even took a moment to go into my apartment and water my own plants as well. All right, so what we're going to do today is we are going to do a watercolor. Of Penelope Rex. If you don't have a drawing of Penelope Rex or you don't know what you did with your drawing from last episode, just go back to my last my last video um, and you could do a guided drawing of Penelope Rex from the fantastic book We Don't Eat Our Classmates by Ryan D. Higgins. All right, what you're going to need is you're going to need your drawing. If you have tracing paper, you're going to want tracing paper. If you don't, I have a solution for that. If you have watercolors and a cup of water and a paintbrush, you're going to need that. If you don't have those, that's okay. You can use regular paint. You could use a marker. You could use colored pencil. You could use crayon. Any of those are good. All right, so I have, I have all my fancy pencils, but I'm actually, for the first step, just going to use a mechanical pencil. I want something with the sharpest tip because I want to be very exact in this. I'm going to put my tracing paper over the paper I did yesterday, okay? And what I'm going to do is I'm going to trace it. I'm going to trace the whole thing. Now, if you do not, if you make accents, by the way, that's okay. It's always okay to make accents in art. If you do not have tracing paper, that's okay. What you can do is you can go back to your regular drawing. You can outline it in marker. And then take a regular piece of paper and trace over it. It'll, it'll work better than you think. I think it's important to go back to your original drawing and use marker though because without it, it'll be very hard to see. Regular paper isn't quite thin enough. But if you use marker, you should be able to. Now, it's a little hard for me to hold the camera and trace, so I'm going to put it down and I'll come back to you when it's all traced. All right, all right it's all traced. Now, if you made little mistakes, little mistakes, right? I made a little mistake there, that's fine. Don't worry about it, this is not your final draft, okay? If you made mistakes on your original picture, right? Like maybe you made a line across there or you went too high in your spikes and you didn't like it. 
if you made those mistakes, then don't trace them onto here, okay? If you made mistakes on your tracing paper, that's fine. This is not the final draft. What we're gonna do next is I have my regular, my original picture, I have my tracing paper, now I need a third paper. I'm gonna use fancy watercolor paper. If you don't have fancy watercolor paper, no problem. Just use the thickest paper you have. Okay, so I have my tracing paper, it's very light. I have my original picture. And then the next thing I'm gonna need is paper to watercolor on. So I'm gonna use this fancy watercolor paper just because I have it. If you don't have it, that's okay. You can use regular paper on, or if you have thick paper, any const white construction paper, really the thickest paper you have is good. Because the more watercolor you do, the more it's going to bleed through the paper. The thinner the paper, the more it's gonna bleed through. Um, my watercolor paper, I'm actually reusing. This is a, a painting I did last week, following a really great watercolor tutorial on YouTube from Let's Make Art. They're great, thank you. And I'm gonna reuse the back of it because there's no reason not to. I just like to make watercolor for fun. So the next, the next thing we're gonna do is I'm gonna put aside my original painting, my original picture for now. I'm gonna take my um, thin paper, my transfer paper, forgetting what's called right now, and I'm gonna turn it over. And now I'm gonna put aside my mechanical pencil and I wanna use the thickest pencil I have. And what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna scribble. I'm gonna scribble over the whole thing and I'm gonna make my own graphite paper, they call it, that's the fancy word. But I'm gonna make my own. I don't need to buy graphite paper, I can make my own. I'm scribbling over everything that has a drawing underneath. It's really important that you're doing the scribbling with something behind you because if you're not, if you're doing this for instance on a fancy wooden kitchen table or something, you're gonna make marks underneath. I will show you how that works in a moment. All right, I've scribbled over everywhere where there is a drawing underneath. You notice I haven't scribbled over the whole paper. You can, but there's no need for it. So I'm gonna take my watercolor paper. I'm gonna flip my tracing paper back. And now I'm gonna go back to something sharp. You can also actually use um, pen for this. You can use marker, you can use anything. Because it doesn't matter what's gonna go on top. What you trace on top is gonna be shown underneath, okay? So when I start to do a line here, that line, is gonna come underneath, okay? I'm gonna go back and do my whole paper, but I have to put the camera down. All right, all right, I've retraced all of it. It should look darker. Now, if you made little mistakes you didn't like, for instance, I noticed I have a line there. Maybe I don't, maybe I just want it to show the tail. All you have to do is not trace over the mistakes and then it won't show up underneath. Another trick is that if you're having trouble with this paper moving around a lot as you're working, you can actually tape it down with a bit of masking tape. And then when you're done tracing, aha, it comes out underneath. And the really cool thing about doing this is if you later want to make another version of the same picture, all you do is you move it onto something else and trace it on top of there and it will go there as well. Now, my picture, I noticed there's extra, just little extra bits, extra little pencil bits around. That's okay. I'm gonna go into my little pencil stack here. Ooh, having trouble getting that eraser out. And I like to use this gummy eraser. You can, of course, use a regular eraser, but I like it because you can play with it as you use it. So I'm gonna just get rid of a little bit of this extra because when I use watercolor, it's gonna actually pick up on this. Oh, I thought I wasn't gonna do that line and I did. That's okay, I'm just gonna erase it. No worries. All right, when, when setting up my watercolors, I wanna make sure I have paper towel. I don't need this pencil anymore. I have watercolor. I have my paintbrush. And I have a little mixing tray. Now you may have um, watercolors that come in a tray and they're little circles, that's fine. I don't have those. I actually have these watercolors that come in these tubes. 
and I'm going to use a yellow, a red. If you have different types of red, use a pink or whatever the lightest red is, and I'm going to use a brown. All right, so I have my colors, and if you have been playing around with your paint and your water like I have already, please make sure to get a fresh cup of water because we're going to need a fresh cup of water for the first part, so that's what I'm going to go do. All right, before we start, I want to show you a couple rules of watercolor. The first one is you can always make things darker. It's much harder, sometimes impossible, to make things lighter. So if you start with something that's a very light color and you're thinking, oof, I want that darker, just wait. You can always go back and make it darker. It's difficult when you start with it too dark. Um, the other thing is use your paper towel for mistakes. If you made too much water there, get your paper towel right away and pick it up. It's a great little trick. The third one is um, a lot of times what we do first in watercolor is we put clear water down first and then add the color. And it kind of leads, it disperses, the water moves around. I'm sorry, not the water, the, the color moves around in the water. And that's what gets the cool effects of watercolor, right? 